this screencast is my top tips for uh, using Eclipse. So uh, one of the first things I, I like the most is the outline view. So if you don't have it showing, use the window menu, come up to show view, and you can select outline here. And depending on um, how you work and what tools you use, you may want to come into other and uh, navigate around here and decide which of these views you'd like to have showing on your screen. Outline view can be very useful because you can sort all the routines alphabetically. The icons show you what's private, what's public. Um, you can hide all the fields, you can show all the fields, and um, stat, same for static members, and then you can hide all the non-public members. Oh, this is probably if you if def out um, uh, an entire method or something, this will then not show it to you in this list. So when you click on a method, it just jumps right to that method. Next is a useful keystroke. Shift Control L brings up the list of um, short, shortcut keys to quick look at. Um, I don't use this too often, but I often just, if you see at the bottom, it says press Shift Control, Control Shift L to open the preference page. I'll hit that often, and that takes you right to the key um, section of the preferences so that you can assign new shortcuts. And since I'm used to doing C Sharp and using Microsoft Visual Studio, it's nice I just switch this over to the Microsoft Visual Studio. And then uh, some of it didn't do everything correctly. Like one of the things I use the most in Visual Studio is Shift F12 and F12 for open declaration and then show all references to a particular declaration. That just lets you, um, if you see a call to a method, it'll, it'll jump you right to that method. And if you want to see everybody that calls that method in a class, it'll, it'll show you a list of all that. And uh, the nice thing about the keys, if you've never used it, is you can sort on any um, column you can sort on the bindings if you want, and then you can go find a shortcut by the binding. If you already know the binding, but you don't know what it's called, um, you can sort by the command name. And the same thing is true of, of searching. So if you put in F and 112, it'll just show you everything that uses the F12 key for the shortcut. Um, so if you were looking for all the shortcut keys that had something to do with properties, you could do that. Um, one of the other keys I like to, to set up right away is uh, the preferences because I end up in this particular pane a lot. So um, there's a lot of preferences panes in my setup. But I the main one I just set up to F10 anytime I'm in Windows. So and wherever I am, you can't see me, I'm just going to hit the F10 key. And then the preferences pane shows up. And then I do the same thing for the project preferences. I uh, That's actually the project properties is what that's called. Um, I make that shift F10 so that I can jump to that right away. Let's take a quick look at uh, F12 and shift F12. So let's see who calls this complex table download. You don't even need to highlight the whole thing. Just put the cursor anywhere in it. Hold on the shift key, hit F12. And it goes and finds where it's being called in that in this particular project. And you can just double click on that. And it'll take you to that call. Um, if you want to find who's calling something else, and this happens to be in the same class, but I'm just going to put my cursor there and hit F12, and it's going to jump me right to that routine. Um, if I want to get back to where I was, I can also use these um, icons up here. And since I didn't edit anything, this one's if you've actually made an edit, it'll jump you back to the last place you made an edit. This will just take you back where you've been. So you can see I can jump back to the various places I've been. I find the rename refactoring very useful too, so I can right click come down here to refactor and say rename. You can see I've mapped that to F2. And then if I hadn't saved any changes, it would prompt me first before bringing this up. And then in this um, dialog, I can change the name of this and then do a preview. And I can say where it's going to change, source code comments, macros, all projects, just this project. Um, and then the preview, I can, I can use as much or as little as I want. Um, and then it's just telling me here a warning that it finds this name within a comment and it's going to change that too. And I actually don't want to make this change. But um, let's just I think we say continue here. There's my preview. And so I can kind of drill in and see where these are going to happen. Okay, and there's the one inside the comment. And then I can just cancel out of this and we'll make the changes. You can use this for um, parameters. Um, and in some cases it's a little faster because it's, it just if it's local it tends not to take you through that preview it just does it or it allows you to look at the preview if you want but um, you can do it on namespaces you can do it on project names um, file names um, anything you want and it's trying to do an intelligent ref um, rename for you so that anywhere it's used 
it gets set. One thing I meant to mention when I was in looking at preferences, let's go back to F10, is um, fonts. So under font, you can change your editor font, and it's often nice to use something other than Courier, and I, I prefer Consolas. And then I've set it just a little bit bigger than normal for this screencast, and I can make it even bigger so things are even easier to see during the screencast, and then easily get back here to change it. Another feature I like is the refactoring for extracting a function. So um, you first select the code. So this is just a message it prints out if we're in debug mode. So we can take that out of the main. And we can either go up here to the refactor menu or we can right click and use the refactor menu and say extract function. And um, this particular extraction is not going to work so well, which is it's sort of instructive. One of the reasons I wanted to show it, it often does exactly what you want. Um, but in this case, this method. Um, this class, everything in it's static. Um, so let's give it a name. We tell it it's private. There's no way to tell it. We want it to be static. And um, it's strange that it wants to pass. It won't let me take out this uh, call by reference. It tells me it's going to be used after the block, but it's being passed in by const, so it should know that it's not going to be changed. Uh, so there's no, re no reason to pass this um, by reference. And um, so we can say no return value to because eventually that's what we're going to want. So anyway, we'll fix these things afterwards. Even it's still convenient because it's going to go and it's going to put this de declaration in our .h file, and it's going to it's showing us what it's going to do here. Oh, let's uh, make this a little bit bigger, and we can see. Um, let me click on the little markers here. I think. So it's going to take this section of code that I highlighted. It's going to replace that with a call to the new method it's going to create called show progress. And then it's showing us up above that it's going to take um, and create this new show progress method and put it right above the call to complex um, table download. So if we hit finish, OK, we can see now we're back to just where the call is. If we scroll up, um, there it is, show progress. And of course, we could have also just hit F12 you know, it jumped right up there to it. Um, so let's take out the reference and let's jump to the uh, declaration of this and let's take the reference out here and let's also call this static and another tip is you can, you know, there's a key binding for um, reformatting so let me let me make that ugly again. I did it by hand, but it's Control E D for the Visual Studio. But it takes your whole file and it reformats it, whether it's .h or it'll do it also in the your .cpp, and then you can, can build. And that's one of the reasons I like to get off the NetBurner um, perspective for those of you who do NetBurner work. And onto the C++ one is um, just so I have access to the build tool, and I add the uh, NetBurner tools toolbar to this perspective as well. And then we build, and all is good, so there was no reason that that had to be passed in by reference, just a, the refactoring uh, is a little confused. Okay, just a couple other refactorings. We can come in here, and we can say refactor, and let's extract this constant. Instead of having the magic number in our code, let's um, call this the FP, just the row size. And bytes, and uh, this can be private as well. Okay.